and so on. But the greatest emphasis he placed on what we were, what we were doing was he said, okay, now you can do it. He said, you've got to feel what you're doing. You've got to feel the music now. And that was the hardest thing for me to do. And this is at the age of 12 or whatever, so it was a long time ago. Mm. But I didn't understand for weeks and weeks and weeks what the hell he meant by feel the music. I thought, well, I can hear the music. But no, he wasn't saying that. He was, no, not hear it. You've got to feel it. Mm. You've got to feel what that means. And you've got to adjust the volume. And you've got to put some kind of emotional content, like Bruce Lee used to say, emotional content into what you're doing. Without that, it's just a a mechanical response. And it's flat, like bad pop music so um with feeling and with emotional content it it communicates so much more and so and so so much greater degree of beauty yes i will Um, will put but what what you're saying is it leads nicely into this last gate so just to kind of recap we said okay gate one (laughs) sounds like game show gate one (laughs) is engagement gate two is unveiling gate three is expansion the final gate is integration and this is this is what you've just led into which is the integration means bringing everything you know together mm. and creating harmony uh, essentially for me it means walking the path uh, once you understand what the path is the path of transcendence and the path of evolution and self-gnosis and so on you can read about it and you can sit there and you can read about it in your lunch break and you can do this and do that sooner or later you've actually got to walk that path Yes. And take some risks and get out there and do it and jettison some of the safety measures that you have in your life and some of the nice comforts. You have to walk away from those to some extent. So there's a classical uh, spiritual path of asceticism and of hardship that gets you through that and that it's the only way to actually do it. And this, this thing is all about bringing about this harmonious balance of selfhood and individuality. The arch enemy of the control system is individuality yes. with, a, with, a, with a, a coherent connection to the universal field or the oneness or whatever you want to call it. But it's, it's creating this attunement, again, this kind of musical concept Um, which allows your brain to to do what it's supposed to do, which is act in a much more holistic fashion. Um, And also for there to be less obstructions and less obstacles to your expansion of consciousness and to to have a more harmonious relationship with what is your truth, with living your own truth and, um, you know, your authentic life, what you actually know you should be doing and where you really should be going and what you shouldn't be doing as well. Mm. So you have to sometimes begin to define it by saying it's a very difficult question to answer to say, I don't know what I want to do. It's much easier to say, I know what I don't want to do, though. So sometimes you might have to twist it around and start from that point. Mm. But sooner or later, you begin mm-hmm. to understand that your life really, all lives are about working you know with the universe with the higher self of your of your own being to to unfold your own transcendence and and that that's what it's that's what it's all about so these gates of awakening you know lead higher and higher and higher and you know the staircase that leads up is 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 quite a thing to perceive and you can't jump from step one to step 100 in one go (laughs) you have to you have to walk up these things you know one by one and if you looked from the bottom to the top, you'd think, Jesus, you know, it's, it's too difficult. I don't think I'll bother, actually. Mm. So there are these milestones along the way, and, you know, various people categorize them in different ways. This is my system. This is my symbology. Yes. These are the, the, the four gates that I perceive uh, and some of the, you know, positives and negatives for each of them. So I hope that's an interesting system. I just thought it would be cool to, you know, share that. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely very important. And, and also, you know, one one thing that we can say here is that to, as, as you mentioned, you talked about it as looking up, you know, to, towards this high point uh, with, with an incredible amount of, of steps or, or stairs. Um, we also need not to focus on what is at the top of that thing right now also in a way because we can yes. – Take one step at a time and and enjoy where we're at at, at that moment and and uh, you know before you know it you're you're gonna have a, a pretty nice view you know <laughs> so yeah yeah absolutely that's 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 a that's a key point if somebody's you know if somebody's sat around thinking well what's at the top what does it all mean why are we here if you were given that information without the proper ascension you, you would just blow your head off it would just obliterate your whole being. This thing has to be perceived, this transcendental object at the end of time, as uh, Terence McKenna called it. I see it as something different. I see it as a, a gradual journey down this kind of fractal spiral to say, as you increase in your intelligence, as your consciousness increases, 
it gives you a greater capacity to travel deeper down this this fractal spiral so that as I, as i've said in a recent piece that each lifetime you live is a, is a frequency is a resolution of this fractal leading to you know grander and more beautiful structures within it that we ourselves are helping to articulate with our consciousness so consciousness is the the construction material of this of this spiral so hmm. um, our our lives um, our individual lives and our collective lives um, represent the movement of this fractal uh, spiral through through time yes um, beautifully put and, and I think that that's a good place to begin to round things up here for the for our first segment uh, we, we've been talking about the gates of awakening of course this has led us into a little bit of um, you know the field uplink and and uh, imagination and so forth but we need to talk yes. more about uh, the increasing polarity of consciousness that's very interesting yes. and also how to you know find oneself or locating oneself in all of this so we have much more to 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 talk about here next up in our member section but uh, I mean in the first segment here Neil is there something you'd like to leave us with I also of course want you to mention uh, your website so people can find more of your writing yeah um, I think from my perspective the message, the message I try and give to people through through my work, and sometimes I go into a lot of detail, and sometimes I keep it quite light. But throughout uh, each pull of of what I do, whether it's dense or whether it's spiritually active, the the core message is you have to go your own way, you have to work on yourself, and whatever's coming down the pipe to to greet us over the coming years is is a, a personal extremely intimate test for all of us so there's nothing that is going to be televised as such and what you see through the tv as we all know is just you know horseshit really so that's to be moved away from as quickly as possible what happens in the world is is rather an existentialist rather an intimate experience and those things can only be approached and can only be brought into being through Working on yourself, improving yourself, growing, learning, etc. Those are the only things we're here for, and that is an eternal journey. Along the way, there's a lot of cool stuff and a lot of brilliant things to see, but that journey in itself also is the 